What's up and welcome, I am the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the Milan career where today we are going to be finishing up our first season here. Uh, we're going to be claiming our trophy, we already won the title, we have nothing left really to play for. So with these final three games, I'm going to be using them to evaluate our younger players and those players that don't feature very often for this team and really kind of evaluating what kind of talent we have depth wise on this team seeing if some of those players are worth keeping around or if they're just dead weight we need to sell them on and also seeing what kind of players those younger players that we have in this squad are so that's gonna be very very important for us in these final three games so since that's really what we're focusing on and not the final result i'm not going to be doing full gameplays instead i'll just show you the final screen where we see the player ratings I'll tell you who played well and who really didn't uh, really show up or, and things like that and kind of evaluating those performances because that, like I said, is more important for us right now. The games just don't matter. The results don't really matter for us. So um, after that, we'll get into a squad report. We'll talk about what we need to do going forward for season number two, some places we need to strengthen, some areas you know we can bring in some better players, and also maybe changing the sliders a little bit for season number two. So we'll talk about that at the end. Let's get in. Let's finish off this season first. All right, so our first game was away against Atalanta. This is a team that's given us a lot of problems this season, but this reserve team managed to come out with the win, and it was actually a very, very dominant performance. You can see the players that we took off that did start the game, Pulisic, Laren, and Poli were in the starting 11 initially. We won the game 1-0, and here are the player ratings. Yuri Tillemans, man of the match, absolutely had a 9.0 rating, was very, very good in there. I thought Kyle Laren did a fantastic job. Poli, a player I don't think has had an appearance all season long, kind of shows why. He had a 6.4, picked up a yellow card as well, was kind of average. Bertolacci, who played sparingly at the beginning of the season, hasn't played much since. He played very well. Lozano had to come on. Pulisic, unfortunately, went off with an injury. How it wasn't a red card for them, I don't know. But uh, yeah, he ended up getting injured, so Lozano came on and, of course, was fantastic as usual. Suso actually got the game-winning goal, and I am going to show you um, a couple of the highlights here, because some of them were pretty interesting. Actually, I'm going to show you two. Two highlights. The first one, this is pretty much how this game went. Look at this shot from Lozano and the save from Sport Yellow. How? How in the world did he make that save? A one-on-one -on -one chance. A breakaway for Lozano. And he made that save. It was absolutely ridiculous. And then here is the goal from Suso as well. A brilliant counterattack. Tillemans gets, uh, gets the assist on this one. Thankfully, I don't know how the keeper didn't save that one. That was no, nowhere nearly as good of a shot as Lozano had, but still found the back of the net. So we ended up winning this game 1-0 away at Atalanta. A very impressive performance. You can see 17 shots, 10 on target. Absolutely dominated this match. And following up on the injury I mentioned for Christian Pulisic, it's an MCL. He's done for three months. I mean, I, I think I said it was an absolutely disgusting tackle that sent him off. Um, it was a 50-50 ball that Pulisic got to first. He won the ball, and then the player slid in late and took him out at the knee. I mean, it was an absolutely dirty tackle. And there wasn't even a foul called on the play. No red, no yellow, not even a whistle. It was a disgusting play. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. He's probably not even going to be back for the beginning of next season. He's going to be out for quite some time. I don't remember if I mentioned that Rob Magnoli picked up a pulled quad in one of our games. But, uh, yeah, he's out as well. But that doesn't really matter. He's probably not going to play the rest of the season anyway. I'm still going to be evaluating some of our center backs. So for our penultimate game of the season, we were at home to take on Bologna. We did manage to win this one. It was a very, very close game, though. We won it 2-1 on a late goal from Irving Lozano. A beautifully taken goal. Ball played into him on the edge of the box. Little drag back move to get by the defender. Slotted by the keeper. Nicely, calmly taken by Lozano. Beautiful goal. Fosu Benza, though, man of the match. He got the scoring started early with a 7th minute, I think, goal. Uh, off of a corner, nicely worked. Um, it was headed back across by one of our players and then headed home by Fosamensa. He also picked up the assist on Lozano's goal as well. And he did ph phenomenally all around in the midfield, tackling, winning balls, playing nice passes. I mean, he was an absolute monster in there. Um, the player I wasn't impressed with though was Niang. He started up top at striker, just didn't perform once again. And it's a problem now. I'm actually very worried about Niang. He might be a player that we could sell in the off season. And I don't think we lose anything at all he's outplayed on the left wing by Lozano up top I prefer obviously Chicharito and then Kyle Laren is better than Niang as well he performs better than Niang so I'm not sure what to do with Niang um unfortunately I won't have another chance to evaluate him this season we have one more game left but Niang picked up an injury so he'll probably be done for the year Lapadula came on after Niang got hurt and did absolutely nothing he's obviously a player we're gonna sell I wanted to give him one more chance did absolutely nothing in this game so 
Um, other than those two, I was impressed with this team. We have one more game left this season, and we got to go collect our trophy. So before the final game of the season rolls around, we have a youth academy player that wants out, and it's Stefano Gasparoni. I've had my eye on this dude for a while. I've been waiting for him to ask to be called up because I want to call him up. 65 overall already at just, just 18 years old. Most likely is going to hit the high end of his potential, which is up to 86. Looks really, really good. Only 5'7", a little bit short for me for a midfielder, but that's okay. His technical abilities look absolutely phenomenal. I'm going to see what he's got. I'm going to give him a run out there in the final game of the season. So for the last game of the season, we're going to be away at Cagliari, and I'm just going to go ahead and play this game as usual. I'm still trying to evaluate some of these players, so it's mostly a reserve lineup, but I do have those key players that have been starters all season long on the bench. I'll bring them on late for the trophy celebration at the end. Chicharito, Corona, and Kaká are the three that are going to make late game substitutions. So, oh, barring any injuries, I should say that, barring any injuries, those three players will come on and raise that trophy at the end of this one. So let's get in here, play this final game, and collect our trophy. All right, here we go. Kickoff for the final game of the season against Cagliari. They've got some good players in their team as well. Yusuf Palsin and Marco Sau are the front two on that team. Two players I rate very, very highly. So hopefully we can hold them, not allow any goals, keep a clean sheet in this final game, and collect our trophy. Oh, yo, Montalivo. That was close. Play it back to Montalivo. Nope, instead it's going to be Yuri. Woo, good shot. I think that was Yuri Tielemans that got the shot away. Good save from the keeper. Well, there's the whistle for halftime. This is it's been the one of the <laughs> worst first half performances we've had so far. Um, that's unfortunate. Our, the two games I played previous to this, we were really, really good. This has been kind of mediocre. All right, we have a corner early in the second half. Come on, Gauthier on it. I'm not sure why. Here we go, Palsin. Or not Palsin. Tielemans! That's a goal! Was that Vergara as well? I think that's our center back, Jerson Vergara. With a beautiful low finish. It was a beautiful low finish in the box. Beautiful play. Beautiful finish from a center back. 1-0 early in the second half. Nicely done. That's a beautifully worked corner. Nicely done. I think Yuri Tielemans gets the assist as well. Yeah, he does. Nicely done, boys. 1-0. All right. Substitution time now. Chicharito, Corona, and Kaká are coming on for these final moments. They were key players for us. I want him on the field for the trophy celebration. I didn't get to run. I didn't get to play Gasparoni. Completely slipped my mind. I had him on the bench, but obviously I couldn't bring him in when I already had these preset subs made. So, yeah, I don't know what happened there. But oh well, we'll try Gasparoni in the preseason tournament next year. There is the final whistle for this one. A narrow one nothing victory. It wasn't the best performance by any means. We really struggled in that game. Really, really struggled in that game. It's unfortunate, but hey, we go out with a win. We go out with a trophy, which is even more important. That's a quick turnaround for this team, who I think finished in like 7th or 8th last year in real life before I came in and took over. Back up to number one. That's what I like to see. We're off to a good start with Milan. So as the squad report rolls through on the side, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do in this upcoming offseason and this transfer window. And unlike our first offseason where we came in at the very beginning and brought in a lot of players, I don't want to do that this time out. We don't need to do that this time. We needed depth in our first season. We went and we got that depth. This time around, we don't need to. We just need to get some starting quality players to strengthen a couple of spots. So the first spot I think we might need to address is the fullback spot, particularly at right back. Obviously, DeSiglio has got left back on lockdown, but DeSiglio can play either left back or right back. He's right footed with a four star weak foot, so he can play either side. It doesn't really matter. So really, our options are open whether or not we want a left back or a right back. We can get either one. It wouldn't make a difference, but Abate just doesn't get it done for me. He's constantly out of position. Yes, he's very, very fast and can recover quite quickly. But it's going to hurt us in the, in the future. I know it will hurt us in the future. So I think we need to look to replace Abate with a better fullback. Calabria, I think, has some good potential to him. But he's not good enough to start right now at right back. So we need, I think, to go out and get a starting quality fullback into this team. 
The second spot where we could get a starting quality player is at center back. We have a lot of good center back depth, not a lot of high quality starting center back players. We have Ro Magnoli. Outside of that, I don't think with this upcoming season, the way I think it's going to go, I don't think we have enough players there at, the, at this time and especially not enough starting quality players there. I think we should go out and get a really, really, really good center back. It's something some of you guys mentioned before as a position we need to look to strengthen. I agree with it and now I think it's the time to address it. So a starting quality center back or two would be a good idea for this offseason. And the third spot I think we could use a really, really good player, starting quality player in, is actually center attacking mid. And I know the plan was to play kickoff this season, bring back Hachima store, insert him into that starting 11, allow him to grow into that role under the guidance of Kaka, kind of. Unfortunately, I don't know if that plan is going to work out. In theory, it was a good idea. In practice, I'm not sure it's going to work. First of all, Mastor is not ready to start. He's only 70 overall rated. By no means is that starting quality on this team at all. Um, so that's the first problem. Secondly, unfortunately in FIFA 17, his potential has gotten massively nerfed. It was like 87 or 86 or something in FIFA 16. I had him in FIFA 16. He was incredible. In FIFA 17, only 81 potential. And I don't have a problem with that. If he was 80 or 81 right now, absolutely I would play him. Unfortunately, with that low of a potential, it means it's going to take him a lot longer to grow to get there. And we don't have time really to do that. We want to win right now. That's kind of what we're doing. We're setting up for Champions League next season, defend our title. We're going to have the domestic cup as well. But I, I need to make a good showing in that at some point. So we're going to be competing on three fronts. I don't think the Hachima store is the player that we need right now. I will keep him around. I'll allow him to grow and maybe at some point play a larger role. But right now, I think we need a high quality center attacking mid to take over for Kaká. And just quickly before this squad report wraps up, a couple of players that we need to look at maybe selling on. Uh, the first one, obviously I mentioned Abate, just not getting it done for me. I would like to sell him if that's okay with you guys. Let me know what you think about that. The second one, I've made my decision and it's my opinion, we need to sell Niang. Just not getting it done, not the player I expected him to be unfortunately. I really wanted him to be very, very good and take over for Chicharito at some point. But he wants a pay raise, and I don't think I want to give it to him. Uh, he's not good enough to get that pay raise that he's asking for. I think we need to sell him. Unfortunately, I do think it's time to sell Niang. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Maybe if you can convince me to keep him for one more season and play him where I can, I'll try to do that. But it's going to take a lot of convincing. All right, so these are my top three players for the three positions that I just mentioned in that squad report. Center back, full back, and center attacking mid. Starting off at center back, he would be Marquinhos. It's kind of an interesting story with Marquinhos as well. There used to be a Brazilian center back here at Milan by the name of Thiago Silva, who is now Marquinhos' teammate and mentor at PSG. It would make a lot of sense to bring Marquinhos in. It's a good storyline to have going into next season. Uh, at full back... One of my most coveted players I want to try out in, in career mode is Miguel Layun. He'd be right at home here with the three other Mexican players I've already brought in. Um, and he's a phenomenal left back. I really, really want to give this guy a go. I mean, look at his, his attributes over there. Nearly everything in the green. Just a great all-around player. And it would force us to move DeSiglio to the right, which is not a problem. He can play over there as well. At center attacking mid... Probably my second most coveted player I want to try in career mode is Hakan Chalhanolu, or as I call him, just Chali. I want to try Chali. He and Chicharito linked up really well at Leverkusen. We could reunite them here at Milan, and he fills a massive need on this team as he is one of the best free kick takers in the world. So he would really, really fit well in this team. Also still on this list is Bradford Jameson. We could probably use some striker depth. I'm going to sell Lapadula. I'm most likely going to get rid of Gauthier. He's not a player I plan to use. One star weak foot, three star skills doesn't fit my play style at all so we could use some more striker depth you guys liked Bradford Jameson in the voting that took place earlier so I'll try to bring him in this offseason as well all right so that is where we're going to end this episode and our first season with Milan we finished with 89 points 13 points clear of second place Juventus really didn't expect that to happen really really did not expect that to happen and I know it says we only have three losses we only lost three games but that is not indicative of how difficult this season was, especially the second half of the season, a lot of very, very close games. Look at the last three games this episode. 1-0, 2-1, 1-0. Yes, we won all three, but they were all by one goal. So there's a lot of really close games going on. But for next season, I think I'm going to play with the sliders a little bit. I'm going to turn down our defensive sliders just to make a couple more goal-scoring opportunities for our opponent. 
I don't think we should be the best defensive team in the league with the defense we had with only one 80 rated player. We shouldn't be the best defensive team in the league. So we should be giving up more goals than we are. It's just that we have one of the best goalkeepers in the league in Donnarumma stopping everything. So I want to see more 3-2 games or more, you know, 2-2 games. If it's a draw, 2-2 is more exciting than nil-nil. I just want to see more goals being scored. So hopefully that will happen next season with the sliders. That's also why I want to try to boost our defense a little bit with getting better players in. If they're going to have more opportunities, I want our defense to be a little bit better to try to stop more of those opportunities as well. So that is where we're going to leave it for this one. If you're looking forward to season number two, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. I will see you when we come back for the second season with Milan. See ya.